Let's see if we can upgrade the laser cutter. So this is the chiller that Vivor sent me. I've purchased their products several times. You've seen them on the channel. Uh, my lathe and floor tiles, if that video is up yet, but I decided it's time to upgrade the K40 laser cutter with an actual chiller for those days that we're running it. It's constant. You've seen it on the channel before. I did the five gallon bucket approach with the coolant in the bucket. Well, today we're gonna use this as our pump and hopefully a chiller as well. This is a pretty cool little rig. I think their website underrepresents it a little bit. Basically what we have is a fill on the top, our fill valve up there, or just a cap, into the tank, our inlet and our outlet for our laser, and then a drain. But we also have a sight glass to see where our coolant level is in the tank, a water level. And it comes with a standard power cord and there's an alarm wire out which I think we could probably hook into whatever we wanted with microcontroller but I don't need any of that this we just want to set up and replace my five gallon bucket what I might do eventually is put a heater in line and that way we can preheat the coolant in the really cold winter days like I did with the uh, aquarium uh, heater that's in the five gallon pail now but huge huge fan I think this is going to be just fine it does seem to be industrial and uh yeah i should do the trick you thought we weren't going to take it apart i bet you thought there was going to be an industrial compressor or chiller of some form in this i know i did surprise there isn't so this unit is purely a cooling coil two of them actually and a fan to cool them, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, at the price point, I kind of expected that. We have our pump down at the bottom here. This black one here is suction from the bottom of the tank going up outlet, and this looks like a flow monitoring valve. Um, there'll be just a vein in here that spins, and we can use this for the alarm to determine whether there's flow or not. And yeah, not much to it. Big plastic tank, power supply down there for our, the 110 to probably 12 volt for the pump. And there's quite literally nothing to it. It's just a simple cooling coil and a fan and nothing nothing to be surprised. Uh, it, it's a re really neat modular solution though to the problem of the K40. Um, here's our temperature control, which will be probably just for the fan only. Uh, the pump's got to circulate all the time. And yeah, nothing to it. There's nothing else in there. Simple, elegant, uh, not exactly a chiller. Well, it seems like a fine constructed unit, as long as you know what's in there. Super basic, super simple. And the cool part now, now that I know what it's doing, I don't have to disconnect any refrigeration or anything. I can drop my aquarium heater down through the top hole in the winter that I run off of my Wi-Fi switch. And I'm just literally going to drop it down into the tank through here, seal this up with some tape, and that's it. Nothing to it. I'll be able to run this in the winter time. So I had some time to think on this and I definitely don't agree with this being called a chiller. I think chiller would imply that it has to go below ambient to be refrigerant, something of that nature. I think this thing should be labeled as a cooler and I can't support it being labeled as a chiller at all. So that's what I thought of. It's time to change out the bucket. This thing has lived its good life and now it's time for it to go and make room for something a whole lot better. These uh, inlet and outlet are too big for the K40 laser cutter and I need to adapt it to from, I uh, believe it's 3 8 to 5 16 The adapters are crazy expensive around here and the closest I got is Amazon, so I'm 3D printing some. The Anycubic Photon is chewing away on them right now, about an hour and a half print. I printed six of them, so I'll have lots of spares for the future. If you want to see this resin printing workstation, I made a whole video devoted to the build.
If you don't have a 3D printer but would still like to make resin prints like this, don't worry, just slide over to PCBWay.com and go to the 3D printing page. You can pick from resin, nylon, peak, ABS, PLA, and many other materials. Pick all the material type you want, upload your CAD file, and go ahead and submit for review. They'll get back to you with any problems and you can see whether you like their pricing and whether you want to continue with the order. Check them out at PCBWay.com. Okay, I got our 3D printed fittings here. Uh, they should do the trick and hopefully they should hold up and last. The rain tubing here. And yeah, that's going to work. So I'm just going to go ahead and hook this up. There's nothing to it. Push the hoses on. And that's what our fittings look like. Nothing to it. Okay, there's no mistaking when this thing is running. I filled it up, the air bled out instantly on its own. The alarm sounded for the first few seconds of that. And that backs up what we saw inside, that we have that flow sensor. And if I pinch off the line by hand, we get an instant alarm when the flow isn't there, which is super, super cool. Um, I'm going to put it through its paces here and we'll see if we can get the temperature out, but flow is, that, that alarm works awesome. I like that. Okay, we've been running for about an hour solid and we get no discernible temperature rise over ambient. The temperatures on the K40 itself agreed. Uh, we can't get below the ambient temp of the coolant where we started because it's just passive cooling with the rad and the, and the fan but it's holding perfectly. Uh, it's shedding every bit of heat load uh, out the back. You can't feel much different. It just feels like ambient air because it's, it's, not, it, it's removing it as fast as I'm building up the heat. The reservoir held about half, a little more than half of my five gallon bucket. So uh, plenty of capacity, a little less than what I had before, but yeah, we're only moving like within the degree up down. And I think that's well within the margin of error for the sensors. So uh, time will tell, right? We need to put this thing through and let it run for a while. And, but on hot days, I think I'm gonna be just fine. And then in the winter, I think I'll put my immersion heater in through the top, um, just like a light duty aquarium heater. And then I'll block the back airflow off and uh, that way it won't actually cool to the temperature of the unheated garage. But I like it, it's, uh, it's doing the business. So we'll see, time will tell.